Hello everyone, myself Anjali Shivaju with say from class 10th and today I am going to present our topic Energy Sources of Odisha from Subject Science. This is an art integrated project. Art integration is a cross curricular that utilizes various aspects and forms of arts and culture as the basis for experiencing the learning concept across subject. This is initiated by a government under Ek Bharat Shreshta Bharat. Energy Sources of Odisha In this presentation, I am going to go through with the following topics that are what are energy sources, brief introduction, availability of resources, afford, affordability of energy, quality of available energy, potential forest for energy security, different companies, why is Odisha ideal for thermal power plants, power network of Odisha. So let again. Barack Obama was the US president and stated that a nation that can't control its energy sources can't control its future. And it is very true. Now you might be wondering that what are energy sources? So let me tell you. Energy is the ability to do work. Energy exists in several forms such as heat, kinetic or mechanical energy light, potential energy, electrical or other forms of sources could be classified as renewable and non-renewable. Renewable energy includes solar energy, biomass energy, wind energy, geothermal energy and hydropower energy. Non-renewable energy includes coal, fossil fuel, nuclear, natural gas and etc. Orissa is the first state in the country to take up power sector reform to ensure stable and quality power at reasonable cost. The energy department is a public sector undertaking by Grid Corporation of Orissa Limited that is GRIDCO. Orissa Power Transmission Corporation Limited that is OPTCL. Orissa Hydropower Corporation Limited that is OHPC and Orisa Power Generation Corporation Limited, OPGC, under its administrative control. The Orisa Electricity Regulatory Commission, that is OERC, which is a quasi-judicial independent body, ensures a transparent regulatory regime in the power sector of the state. To govern various aspects of power sector coordinating with all central and state level power utilities, in a manner that the resources and activities are judicially targeted towards the betterment of society. It formulates plans, policies, uh, acts, rules, undertakes development activities. It also inspects and certifies all electrical installation in the state for adherence, acts, rules, and safety standards collects electricity duty against energy sold, investigates for an expansion of generation, transmission and utilization of electricity. Availability of energy resources in the state. Orissa has a large diversity of primary energy sources. This include coal, hydro, biomass, solar and wind energies. Possible use of energy sources are presented in figure 1. So the dark square indicate that the application is possible and the white one that is not possible, light square indicates limitation of use. In this pie chart of energy availability scenario in Odisha, India, you can see that this blue colored portion which represent thermal power plants, that is 86%. Gas is 0%, hydro is 7%, solar is 4%, wind 
biomass is 1% and other renewable sources are 2%. Now, affordability of available energy. As per 2001 census, Odisha has 66 lakh 18,547 ruler households. However, as in March 2008, against the electrification of 63 villages, only 17 lakh 58,469 houses, constituting 27% of total ruler households were electrified. Poor penetration of LPG in urban household may be due to economic and institutional reasons. With few households in the rural area at a higher level in the energy ladder, dung, crop residue, fire, food, kerosene, gober gas, LPG electricity for cooking in Odisha also indicates a poor affordability. Efficiency of energy use, firewood, is often more expensive than cleaner fuel, but the former is still used possibly due to high initial investment to access later. Affordability appears to be dominant factor influencing the fuel choice. With significant correlation between expenditure on clean fuels and economic status in both rural and urban areas. Now, quality of available energy. The electricity in rural areas is categorized by high voltage fluctuation, that is means changing, frequent service interruption and long period of non-supply. Old and outdated infrastructure, large demand, supply gap, weak customer relationship management, result in poor quality of electricity services. Traditional process of cooking in rural area using biomass results in high indoor air pollution. From a survey of traditional store ownership and health among households in rural Odisha is very high incidence of respiratory illness was observed. About one third of adult and half of the children in the survey had experienced symptoms of respiratory illness in 30 days preceding the survey with 10% of adults and 20% of children experiencing a serious cough. The authors who has found a high correlation between using a traditional stove and having symptoms of respiratory illness. Potential of forests for energy security. Forests contribute to energy security directly and indirectly. As from figure 2, you can say, state that or say that from forest, direct sources are biomass, then thermochemical conversion is done, then physiochemical conversion, this we are going to see. Forest through the provision of biomass directly contribute to the supply of primary energy that can be used as a fuel for cooking and heating at the household and industrial level. Biomass produced from the forest, agricultural crop, residue and plantation can be converted to solid, liquid and gaseous fuel through thermal chemical conversion physiochemical conversion and biological conversion. Energy can be produced through thermochemical thermo conversion by direct burning of biomass. Thermal chemical conversion can lead to production of charcoal, that is solid fuel, liquid fuel through bryologous and gaseous fuel. These are the companies who supply energy sources and they are Central Electricity Supply Utility of Odisha, 
Tulchur Kolar HVDC System, Great Corporation of Odisha, IB Valley Coal Field. Your IB is a tributary of Mahanadi River, Mahanadi Coal Field, Northeastern Electricity Supply Company of Odisha, and etc. You can see here. Now, here is a question that. Why Odisha is ideal for thermal power plants? Odisha is ideal location of thermal power plant because large coal reserves in Talchur, IB Valley, coal fields of Mahanadi coal fields limited and abundant water in Hirakuna, Rengali reservoirs in close proximity of the coal mines make this location perhaps the best sites for peat head power plants in the country. Unlike most states in the country, Odisha is at present surplus in power and with careful planning already undertaken. It will remain so despite speedy growth of industrialization during the coming decades. Many of the large industries existing and new are setting up captive power plants. To attract flow of investment to the power sector, the new policy contemplates provision of land, water, at industrial rates to power plants and electricity duties, exemption for captive power plant. These are the power network of Orisa. You can see here. Thank you.